Hello everybody, so um, this is my second to last commander deck. Once I get all of them, I'm going to be saying it out to you. Um, the reason I'm talking really fast is because um, I, my last videos I did um, stopped doing because I was only like 10 cards in and it was already 6 minutes. But um, that's because there's a lot to talk about this deck. But what I meant by that was with the giveaway, I told you guys about 2 months ago that I'm going to be giving away um, one of each commander deck. My store ran out of a commander deck, so I, I was missing 2. But they finally got them in, so I got this one today, and then I'm going to be getting one more. This, I thought, would be the worst one. Everybody says this is the worst of all the Commander decks. This is actually, in my opinion, could be the best one, if not already is. There's two option ways you can go with this, and I'll just be flipping through cards real quick for some of them. Well, um, I talk about this real quick, and there's some cards I take out too. But, um, what I'm saying, the reason I say this is because, um... With this deck, there's two ways that you can make this deck better. Well, there's three options, and two of them, two choices, or you can mix them both together. First off, you can make this um, deck ramp, and by doing that, you could replace some of the token cards that don't need to be in here with, like, Birds of Paradise, Exploration, Azura's Lost, but Seeking could go in here, um, some 1-1 one -one else that produce mana, the... Um, one card from Theros, it's a Defender Wall that produces mana. Just cards that can produce mana. Because if you notice, like, the a lot of these cards are really high mana cost. Also, you could add, like, a Dark Ritual in here or a Searing Song. So that, um, you get, like, five mana. I mean, it empties out the end of your turn, but it's still, like, five mana. Um, which I think would help this deck along a lot and make it go a lot faster. Those are just some of the cards I'd add. Or you could add, like, um, C Progenitus Protector, whatever I think the card's called. There's a lot of cards in my group hog deck, if you've seen that video, that you could add. But, um, yeah. Or, when, I, when we get to it, I'll explain the other way you can go. But that's one way you can go. And you remember, you can combine these two ways, too, and I'm just going to name some cards that can help you. Um, whenever another creature you control dies, it deals damage equal to its... Power to target player. I think that card's really good because this deck's all about sacrificing. Another card that I would add to this is um, Grave Pact because it would do really well in here. Beginning of your upkeep, choose target non-land permanent you control and add up to two target non-land permanents you don't control. Destroy one of them. Or any card that deals damage to an opponent every time a card's destroyed. Um, Red Sun Zenith, if I had him there, I forgot to take out. Now this card I'd get rid of and replace with Grave Titan because now, as I was saying before, the other way you can go with this is you can make this into a token deck, because there's a lot of cards in here that make tokens. And the reason I would do this is I would add cards like Doubling Seasons could go in here, some Sapperling Creatures could go in here, Grave Titan could definitely go in here. And either way, even if you're not turning this into a token deck, or at least, um... I would turn this into a sack token deck and really get rid of just some of those big creatures that don't have a lot of big abilities that don't have anything to do with sacrificing or like putting one plus one counters on. And because there's a lot of cards in here that can also re make tokens. So I would do that. And the reason I would get rid of this is because it really doesn't need to be in here in Grave Titan no matter what you choose. It could be in here now. I'm saying going with two ways with this, but I'd actually think the best way would just to be combine those two and get rid of some of those unnecessary cards, and I'll be telling you which cards are unnecessary and I would get rid of when we go through them. But this card I would replace with Grave Titan because Grave Titan can make two two creatures every time, and is just a lot better card for this deck, I think. Um because you this deck focuses on sacrificing, and with those tokens it can make, you could sacrifice them. And it's just a lot better card than Inferno Titan. Hunter Troll, um, I'm debating whether to keep it or not. You could keep it in there. My only problem is um, your opponent gets four one ones. And unlike um, Haunted Phantasm, which gives your opponent five um, one one goblins, but your card's a four six. Um, this card's an eight four, meaning that the fairies that you give your opponent have just enough to kill this card. And also the fairies have flying, and this card doesn't have reach um, at all. Also the card doesn't have trample, so you could get rid of it. I'm going to put the stack of cards you could get rid of over here. Um, this is on, I would sideboard this just in case there's um, cards you want to add in. This is a card if um, you want to go straight tokens or you want to mix it, keep in here. But if you're not, if you get rid of the tokens, it just goes straight ramp and don't keep it. There's somewhat need for it. Again, sideboard it. 
This card, as I was saying with the ramp thing, there's a lot of cards that are really high cost, and you could totally add cards to make this card a lot cheaper. Whenever um deals damage to an opponent, you may return target card from your graveyard to your hand. This card, um, I'd keep whenever Fell Shepherd deals combat damage to a player, you may return to your hand all creature cards that were put into your graveyard from the battlefield this turn. Um, be wary if you play this. This is one of the, uh, um, there's th two commanders that I think make really good sense either way you want to go, and then there's one middle commander. So one that works well with tokens, one that works well with sacrificing, and then one that's in the middle. This one works well with tokens. When you cast, or put X, zero, one, um, creature tokens name blank the keeper onto the battlefield where X is the amount of mana spent to cast. Pro sacrifice another creature gets one plus zero into end the turn. Um, this is my favorite one. Um, this goes better if you're using sacrificing. Um, I like this card because a lot of the cards require sacrificing, and this one just says um, sacrifice a creature in each other player, so it makes all your opponents cr sacrifice cards too. Because your deck automatically needs the sacrifice cards, and this just gives you the benefit of being able to sacrifice more cards. And, um, because you already need the sacrifice cards, so you can sacrifice cards and make your opponent sacrifice cards. Um, so it's pretty good. Um, you sacrifice an artifact, each other sacrifices an artifact, or sacrifice an enchantment, each other player sacrifices an enchantment. It's pretty good. It's not actually, no, I'll take that back. It's not my favorite. The dragon's still probably my favorite. No, not the drum. The last one's still probably my favorite. Put target creature card from your graveyard on top of your library. Activate visibility only during your turn before attackers are declared. Really good card. This card's in you with the rares just because I think it could technically be a rare. It's such a good card. Um, Sacrifice a creature for this deck. It's such a good card. Creature card from your hand. Graveyard to your hand. Um, And put a 1 plus 1 counter on target creature. This card works well in here. Whenever a creature dies, you may put a 1 1 counter. Again, really high mana cost, but with the ramp stuff I told you that, you could totally do it. That's if you ha don't have enough money. If you ha don't have enough money, you could always add elves and, as I said, Dark Ritual and Searing Song are cheap things. Sacrifice a creature, destroy target non black creature. So I would sideboard this just so you know if your opponent's not playing heavy black, because if they are, then that card's really useless. Endless Cockroach dies, turn to its owner's hand. Um, three mana, Mass Mutiny, not much to say about that. I like the Cockroach card because it comes back every turn. So, um, when Endless Cockroach dies, return to its owner's hand, so you can tr sacrifice that card. This card has Wall of Text, I'm just going to say. Um, keep it in there. Choose a color. Sun Damage deals X to each creature of the chosen color. Sideboard this just so you know if there's like if they're playing mono, especially if one or more tokens would be put into the battlefield, twice that many of those tokens are put onto the battlefield instead. If one or more one plus one counters will be placed on a creature twice as much. So this and doubling seasons could definitely be put in the deck. So that's a cheap version of pro doubling seasons a little bit kind of. This get rid of. I hate this card so much. It's seven mana is the only reason I hate this. Destroy target permanent. Um yeah, great. The can continuously destroy target permanents for seven fucking mana. Get the fuck out of here. At the beginning of your upkeep, put a um, plague counter on plague bowler. Just use a fucking doom blader. Actually, no. Use a hero's downfall and get the fuck. Get rid of that fucking thing. Put a plague counter on bowler. Remove a plague counter from it when plague bowler has three or more plague um, counters on it. Sacrifice it if you do destroy all non land permanents. Um, Jar of Eyeballs. You could keep Jar of Eyeballs. Um, at the beginning of each upkeep, if you control no snake counters, put a 1-1 one, one black snake creature token on that touch on the battlefield. So you can only put one, because as soon as you play this, your next turn, you're not going to have any snakes. Um, so then you'll get a 1-1 one, one snake. So I guess for free mana, you get a 2-2, two, two, and then a 1-1 one, one snake with death touch. So it's pretty good. I would keep it. Sacrifice two creatures, put a free one red beast creature token on the battlefield. Um, four mana. It's a free one, so ah, you don't really need it. This is um, this is a representation of Haunted Lamasu. It's being killed right there. Oh no, ha Haunted no, not sorry, Haunted Lampu. Um, Haunted Wumpus. Whenever a creature you control dies, you may put a one. If you do, reveal that card from the top of your library until you reveal a creature card. Put that card into your hand and the rest into your graveyard. Um, whenever you cast a creature spell, put an X-1-1 one, one black for all creature tokens on a battlefield where X spells can burn mana cost. Um, Spider deals X damage to each creature with flying. This card you could 
Yeah, I'd get rid of it. Um, you don't need it. This is my favorite one out of all of them. Whenever a non-creature token you control dies, put a free one black, red, gra grave, um, born creature token with haste on the battlefield. I like this one the most because, um, its ability can still be used from the command zone. And also, um, the fact that it's free one black, um, every time a creature dies, you're sacrificing a lot of creatures in this deck makes a lot of sense for this card to be in here. And I think it makes the most sense as your commander. This card I definitely get rid of. I really don't like it because it doesn't untap during untap step. Um, replace this with Goblin Slinger. It's a lot cheaper. It's like a common and it deals one damage and it does untap during your untap step. Um, the eyes put free one one green sapling creature token so you can sacrifice him. And while benefiting one of your other creatures, you can also benefit that. So that's a good card. Um, Terror Revenge. I'm going to flip slowly but surely through the uncommons here. And if there's a noteworthy in common, like, um, um, like, this card right here is a noteworthy one. I actually thought this was a rare at one point or another. Um, it probably wasn't. It was probably uncommon. I have it in my group hub deck, but whenever a creature dies, that creature's controller may draw a card. That you're sacrificing stuff, drawing cards is pretty good. I like this card a lot. Um, Curse of Brewer. Um... Yeah, you're gonna hear me mispronounce stuff, Curse of Chaos, over and over again. Get rid of that. There's basically just really weird lands that you could replace. And then some Guild Gates and stuff. Exile, two creature cards, put single. Um, Curse of a Shallow Grave. Goblin Bomb Bandit. What do you guys think of a new commander deck? They only released one card, but there's a Planeswalker in it, so I assume that one's one of the ones that everybody's gonna go for. So as soon as they're, um,. Announced I'm going to pre-order all five of them and give them away to you guys. What do you guys think about that? Um, tell me what you guys think about me giving away, and I'll know. Um, actually, if you tell me about it, then I'll know that you actually watched the full video, because the video's not close to done. But if you tell me about what you guys think about me giving away the new commander sets, then I'll know who to actually put into the raffle for these these commander ones. So yeah. All you have to do is um, comment down below, tell me what you think about the um, new commander set, and what if, if you guys think I should give some of those away too, which I'm pretty sure you'll just say yes. But add two mana to your mana pool, activate visible only, only if you control five or more lands. In this deck, you will definitely be controlling five or more lands, so that's feasible. Spoils of victory. There's a lot of these cards that you could get rid of for better. As I said, um, some of these cards I wouldn't, but so many cards without any abilities, you could just get rid of for... Um, Elves that add mana, or um, more like Sapperling spawners. Rough deals 2 damage to each creature with flying, 6 damage to each creature with flying. Uh, unless you're playing against a flying heavy deck, um, each are with flying. The problem with that is, too, you're, a lot of your cards, you're dealing damage to your cards, too. Um, put Turtle Land Carpenter and Graveyard on the battlefield under your control, unless for some reason you're sacrificing your lands. I don't know why you would. We gotta go for this faster command tower. Always love that. The fuck are with these cards? Like I just opened this like thirty minutes ago. I've tried to make this video twice, but um, I literally just opened this twenty minutes ago, or thirty minutes ago, and no, probably an hour ago. And um, it came like this with it all screwed up backwards and shit. I don't know why. Um, this is a card I really like in there. Another card that I should have mentioned earlier that I would really, really love to see in this deck is, um, fuck, what's it called? Now I can't even remember. Whenever a spell ability controls, shuffle is a library and a bad player puts the card in the library. Um, it's power toughness is equal to all cards in all graveyards. I'm actually looking for one of them if anybody has one to trade. Um, if you know what I'm talking about, comment down below. That will also be number one if you, um, watch this and you hear what I'm talking about. And I'll also know you watched the full video. But, um, Soul Ring's really good. Lord of Extinction, that's the card. Um, I really like that one. Black card, Grace of the Risen Six or whatever. Obelisk of June's okay in here. Because three mana, though, to play that, though, is my only problem with it, but it's okay. Um, thanks for watching. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and share the video. And comment on the two things down below that I said. Um, if you watched the full video, 
you'll know what I'm talking about. 